All these big names on YouTube, they all say the same thing. To the backs of the creeks, that's where the fish are in the fall. Go to the creeks. This is partially true, but there's a lot more to it than just that. So let's deep dive. Welcome to crappy school. Now, honestly, there are crappy everywhere in the lake. Brush piles, docks, bridges, laydowns in the creek, river channels, you know, pretty much everywhere that a crappy likes to be. But there's a thing that goes on during the fall transition, you know, from your summer to fall to fall to winter, that's gonna happen on every lake across this country that, you know, before we had all this technology, everybody said, go to the backs of the creeks. That's where you're gonna catch your fish. Now, there is a reason that this phenomenon happens in the fall. And that's what I wanna talk about on today's video. So, hey, how's it going? My name's Steven Turner. Uh, welcome to Turner Fishing. I appreciate you being here. If you love crappy fishing, make sure you smash that like button down below. And if you want to learn how to put more limits in your boat, you found the right channel. Subscribe down below, and I'm going to keep you guys updated. We're going to learn together. We're going to continue this journey, and I'm hopefully going to put more fish in your boat 365 days of the year. The main reasons that the bait fish and the crappy head to the backs of the creeks during the fall transition is due to the turning over of the water. Now, what does that mean? Turning over the water. You know, that a lot of people say, has the water turned over, or has whatever turned over. And basically, once it starts cooling down, we get these colder nights, these co cooler days, the cold water that has been in the deep water, where that thermocline was, where there's no oxygen below it, is rising to the surface could last two or three days or it could last up to two weeks and basically what it does it eliminates the thermocline for a period of time now this happens throughout the country during the fall every lake is going to have some kind of water turnover now whether that happens overnight or whether it gradually happens throughout the weeks what is going to happen is the creeks that everybody talks about is going to have more oxygen now I, I made a video in the past all about oxygen you could probably go find it on the channel i mean we're going to talk about that a lot in this video too but basically the fish that you're seeing on your 15 to 30 feet brush piles stacked I could go to any brush pile right now in 15 to 30 feet and I can guarantee you there are 20 to 300 to 500 fish on these brush piles. There are no big fish. There are keeper fish, you know, your eight to 10 inches, but it is just loaded. But the trick is this time of year, I can guarantee you I'm gonna catch either one or none is because whether you're fishing the brush piles whether you're fishing the bridge pylons the docks all these deeper water areas unless these fish are positioned into an optimal place that they're actively feeding and when i mean my optimal is these fish need to be like five feet to ten feet below the surface now if they're deep down there on that brush you're not going to get them to bite they don't have enough oxygen to have the metabolism to actually want to feed. Most of these fish have done their feeding at night and they're just chilling. They're just hanging out until this water turnover changes. And that's why a lot of people during this time of year, you know, people have been fishing for 20, 30, 40 years. They're going to tell you in the fall, you're going to catch your fish in the creeks. The main reason for this is those creek channels have actively running water that is going to disperse oxygen into that creek. And that creek is going to have more oxygen than your main lake points, your main lake brush piles, your main lake uh, bridges, your main lake docks, your river channels, all that. 
they're gonna have more oxygen in the backs of those creeks. So the shad is gonna to migrate to the backs of the creeks to stay alive. Once that water starts cooling down, you know, the shad needs oxygen. I'm sure you've gotten minnows or shad or herring in a, you know, a bait bucket and you put oxygen in it and they still die. They're very fragile. And without oxygen, they're just gonna die, which, you know, a lot of lakes have a shad die off. I kind of wish Lake Murray would have a shad die off because they shad everywhere. But these bait fish, shad, minnows, whatever your crap you're feeding on are gonna move to the backs of these creeks for more oxygen. And vice versa, your bass, your crappy, your catfish, all that's gonna follow them because they've gotta eat too. But at the same time, you're still gonna have thousands upon thousands of fish on your main lake stuff. They're just not gonna be actively feeding. And like I said, the reason for this is lack of oxygen in the water. Now, once the fall transition, you get your lake turnover, you get your uh, water temperature stabilized, and, or you get a lot of rain. Rain really helps, you know, because with rain, what's going to happen is, you know, if you have a dam on your lake, if you have a, a big river channel, they're going to run some water. Now, if you're like us here on Lake Murray, they're, they drop the water down every year for dock repairs, dam repairs, whatever. Some years it's 10 feet, some years it's 5 feet. But I fish, you know, the big Saluda, the little Saluda. They haven't been running the water because they don't need to because they're dropping the lake. And that really messes things up oxygen-wise. But when you get to the backs of these creeks, you eliminate all that. And that's why all these old timies, all these older gentlemen, I mean, a lot of you that watch the videos are a lot older than me, will tell you, you're gonna catch your fish in the backs of the creeks. And the main reason is those fish in the backs of the creeks are going to be actively feeding more often than the ones out there on that brush, out there on the dock because they have more oxygen to to live to have energy to actually actively chase the bait that's in there One of the things about the fall turnover is finding fish that actively want to bite is honestly the biggest challenge like you could take a side scan and get in the middle of a creek channel you're gonna find schools of bait schools of bass schools of crappy you're going to find brush piles stacked with crappie. But you've got to check each, each and every one in order to find the most active fish. So what I want to do right now is kind of give you a couple pointers before, you know, we get done with this part of the crappie school. When you're in, the, when you're in these creeks, you want to kind of break them up into sections. You've got your first half of your creek your second half of your creek, and your third half of your creek. Now, what I want you to do the next time you're out on the water, if you're struggling to get a bite this year, is scan the first half, you know, start where that creek begins, scan until you find a group of fish. You know, I don't care if you've got 2D, uh, side scan, live scope, whatever. Scan until you find a group of fish and drop a jig, minnow, however you like to use. And if you don't get a bite within 10 to 15 minutes, go to the second quarter of that creek. Do the exact same thing until you get a bite on like the first couple drops. And then what I want you to do is repeat this process in another creek. If you got bit in the second half of your creek, the next creek, you skip that first half, you can go straight to the second half. These fish are very patternable this time of year. If you're catching them in 12 feet of water on a brush in the second half of the creek, I can guarantee you can go to the next creek and do the exact same thing. So, but yeah guys, that's pretty much sums it up. This is why everybody tells you to go to the backs of the creeks. It's not because all the fish just magically want to migrate to the back of the creek. It's honestly 
those fish in that creek are more likely to bite than those fish stacked up on that brush pile in that main lake point. Point blank period. That's why it happens this time of year. Now, I don't want no comments saying I can catch them out deep. Yeah, you can. You can trick some of them to bite. But when you're out there and you're limited, you're a weekend angler and you don't have time to be looking for these bites, your best bet is to find more active fish in the creek so you're not out there struggling in the main lake or off the main creek or you know all your little honey holes that have a bunch of fish and they don't want to bite leave them alone for a little bit come back to them in a couple weeks and i'm sure they'll bite but for right now focus on finding the fish that actually want to bite and go catch some <laughs>